Laudable Pursuit, a 21st century response to Dwight Smith by the Knights of the North. Make no little plans. They have no magic to stir men's blood and probably themselves will not be realized. Make big plans. Aim high in hope and work, remembering that a noble, logical diagram, once recorded, will never die but long after we are gone will be a living thing, asserting itself with ever-growing insistency. Remember that our sons and grandsons are going to do things that would stagger us. Let your watchword be order, and your beacon beauty. Think big. Chicago architect Daniel Burnham, the director of works for the Chicago Columbian Exposition of 1893, architect of the Chicago Masonic Temple, which was, in 1891, at 22 stories, the largest skyscraper in the world. Part 1. What come you here to do? Over the last decade, Grand Lodges all over North America have tried to turn the tide of shrinking membership with one-day classes, reduced proficiency requirements, open solicitation, cut-rate deals on multiple degrees, radio, TV, and billboard advertising blitzes, and many other schemes. Doors to the temple have been flung wide open, yet the numbers have continued to decline. The state of the Masonic corpus is lethargic, verging on catatonia, and for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is a sloth born of six decades of Euchre nights pancake breakfasts, fish fries, and bean suppers. Gone are the traveling Masonic orators and globe-trotting lecturers who used to pack our lodges and auditoriums, because we can see and hear more exciting stuff on 275 digital channels these days. Gone are the days when Scottish Rite auditoriums were jammed with a thousand petitioners for the spring convocation, when the Rite offered theatrical productions with spectacle and the finest and state-of-the-art special effects. Younger men who have studied about the craft before joining it are not finding the lodges of Washington and Franklin and Revere, of Goethe and Mozart and the Royal Society members. True, it is folly to pine for some long-ago golden age of Freemasonry because every age had its own challenges and shortcomings, and there's plenty of room for argument as to which little snapshot of Masonic history to which each of us would like to return. One thing remains certain. Freemasonry is shrinking. The huge numbers of the 40s and 50s and 60s are gone forever. A statistical aberration that will never happen again. Moreover, the majority of men who have spent decades sending in money to carry cards in their wallets for the York Rite, the Scottish Rite, the Shrine, Grotto, and Order of the Eastern Star aren't going to those places any more than they're attending their Blue Lodges. Masonry will not be saved by the appendant bodies or their charities. The tail cannot wag the dog. Freemasonry must save itself. It is now our job as the next generation of leaders to decide where Freemasonry is headed and how to get it there. Because the baby boomers rejected Masonry and most things of their fathers, we're jumping a generation and maybe two, and that provides us an opportunity. We're poised on a ledge and can either fall into oblivion or turn around and head a direction different from the one we're going. Not to become just another service club like Lions or Kiwanis. Not to become just another of the animal fraternities by turning our lodges into bars and billiard halls. And not to become crass, noisy, self-aggrandizing backpatters for our charities. We have a brief window of opportunity to return this fraternity to what it once was. The best, most respected, the most universal and the most legendary fraternity in the world. This new generation of members wants to associate with something ancient, something mythical, something legendary with a group that's been the fraternity of the greatest men for three centuries, with a fraternity that is worldwide in its scope and universal in its welcoming of all faiths and all races with a local lodge that helps the family next door and the school down the street. 
with a group that once was at the forefront of issues that shaped this country and, arguably, was the crucible that gave birth to the revolution, because they were men of action and social conscience, with a fraternity that claims as its members the most imaginative minds and the most successful of men. That's what they read about on the Internet and in books and see in movies and even comics. That's the image they see and what they're looking for when they knock on our doors. But what do we give them when they enter? Stop for a moment and think about the image your lodge projects. Think about what they expect versus what they find. Given that disparity, how long do we suspect that they'll stay? <laughs>